Five minutes, six minutes ago. Hey, it's Yay! People will trickle in. <laughs> we did a show for you. Yeah. yeah. You did, a did that happen? Yeah. Holy crap! Well, thanks a lot. Good night. Shortest podcast ever. Question and the question mark. Three chest of Hey Molly, it started. Five minutes ago was five minutes. Yay! 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 And I'm honored to always get to hang out with these very cool people. So, pluses for me all across the board. Uh, for those that have never been here before to do this, uh, traditionally at the end of these wonderful serials, we like to do talkback sessions. And these are ways for audience members or people who have stayed with us the entire time to ask questions about characters, uh, ask questions about writing, directing, styles, uh, influences, costuming. costuming, anything they'd like to tonight. <laughs> That's the goal. Let's just have some fun and answer some questions. I'll be your moderator. Uh, when they tell me to stop, we'll be done. But until then, it's question time, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, anyone have a question? Raise your hand if you have a question for this cast, for the crew, for the rise ending. Yes? Where did you get the music for the intro? Uh, that's, a question. that's a big question. Holy crap. Uh, did not expect that. Sorry. Uh, actually, no, it was very, it was very simple. Uh, me and Scott always have these uh, wonderful conversations about, you know, I ask him what you need, and, and he has this kind of these great influences to go by. And uh, I was at his house, and the first thing he says, have you seen the trailer for Dracula? I was like, you made another one? And he was like, yeah, yeah, check it out. And so it had the song that we I heard on there, and I was just blown away. And I think it's also from, like, Hunger Games. So I got blown away by it, right? And I was like, wow, that's amazing. So Scott introduced the song to me, and that actually influenced the entire piece because it was so powerful, and it was very, very easy. It was originally a Tears for Fears song. Yeah, it's a Tears for Fears song, but I mean, it's been re it's really made fun of old enough to remember it. <laughs> but it was a really great song, and he, he came already prepared with it, and it was a lot of fun to work with as far as creating visuals and that. That's the history of the song. Thank you. Why we used it, at least. Okay. Cool. Good start. Uh, yes. So a lot of y'all were like double or even triple cast. For those of you, yes. For those of you who were, which was your favorite character? Ooh. Anyway, <laughs> Kyla. Kyla. Sorry, just like, TikTok, absolutely. Just start that way and start working them. Yes. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Well, I was just like the Kyla. Yeah. Will has a good movement. I've got a soft spot for Queen Winter. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I liked playing uh, Reflection last week. She was a lot of fun as an introduction to the um, Queen's Reflection. That's a lot of fun. There you go. Skip me. Ditto. I really like Vale, but I am looking forward to playing more of the Red King. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Give me a spin-off. It's going to be great. It's going to be a comedy. <laughs> Smith. 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 Um, and they were nice. 
<laughs> yeah, you left my child. Let's move back real quick, Morgan. What? What did you like playing? What did you like playing? Your favorite oh, character? Oh, I favorite. did. Um, I mean, you know, monkey guard's always fun because you get to get bludgeoned and just fall down and stay on stage forever, and that's fun. Um, but Emma was just really nice. It, even though it was, you know, a, a brief, what, maybe minute and a half scene, uh, it just... It, it was so nice to set up the world and, and set up um, what kind of pain the Red Queen was going through. And really deep and moving. And so, you so you mean so. Wonderland, Emma, though, not... not <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and, and Tamla's fun, too, but I just, I really liked Emma. Oh, that's right, you didn't. I know. <laughs> As if someone had planned it that way. It's <laughs> over for this episode for both of them. Chris, did you do two? Okay. Shaker. Huh? Yeah. And we had uh, Dormouse and... Uh, I uh, really liked playing the Dormouse, and I was looking forward to playing with her for season two again. <laughs> 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 but for the three episodes the Dormouse was in, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I think you guys loved me. Yeah! yeah. Yes. Best interest in those okay. things. So passing that back to... Oh, am I fielding that now? Yes. 
Yeah, so, 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 like so, yeah so, so the first two episodes, uh, I was otherwise involved with another show, so I didn't handle the, the beginning of her stuff. Um, but from the corset on, <laughs> uh, that was uh, that was mine. It, um, it was a really unique challenge because I would have to take into account everything that she would have to do. Obviously, there's a good amount of movement going into that, and especially once we got reflection involved, uh, having to create two completely identical costumes, and then since reflection is starting to get tweaked now, kind of changing up the costume, and uh, it, it was a really interesting challenge to do that on a weekly basis, right? Um, and just having them to crank them out like that. I mean, you know, Sophie had a lot more to do with the the costumes as a whole than I did, but it's. Uh, I mean, I, I think that goes for any character. Just, well, we just we, we had about four or five talented ladies helping us. Uh, I know yeah. Vicky, Vicky made that really awesome. Yes. The card caller, yes. The card yeah. caller. Yeah. 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 helped a lot. And so at the top of the show, it was we had like a big costume meeting, and we just sat down and aside four or five characters to, to one costumer and tried to keep them in the worlds. Like, okay, you're going to do five characters from Oz, so hopefully your costuming design will have a aesthetic that will keep in that world. Right. And you know, while Oz kind of had almost a more of a, a renaissance feel to it at times, we kind of went with whatever we wanted to do with Wonderland and a little bit more Victorian. And so all the ladies that helped out did a, obviously a really cool, awesome job with it. I mean, uh, that, that freaking card collar was just... <laughs> Inspired. I was like, I was like, I need two more and one that can like spring up when the Red Queen's cornered. Gotta make myself look good. I'll spray something when I'm scared. The thing that got Dennis Nedry. Yeah, it's better that somehow. Make it shake a little more time. Yeah, all the talented costume ladies did an awesome job. Marketing. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, for the purpose of the Kickstarter, we needed something that was visually iconic visually so that people knew what we were getting on board with. And then I tried to merge those things where if you were here for the whole show, and in some of the flashbacks that we had, you saw more of that traditional Wicked Witch costume, and that the idea was that the Wicked Witch that we see now is that she's, she's changed, so she doesn't need the traditional witch's garb, and she's kind of become more of an evil Joan of Arc type person. And that much green makeup is a pain in the ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having done the blue. <laughs> at, at, at the beginning of the show, you saw that she had kind of the armor and that green battle mask. And the idea was, yeah, just primarily just being a, a lazy writer, um, is that I didn't want my actress having to put green makeup on eight weeks. And that well, I was like, well, what if we just made it where she had a battle mask and that legend has spread that this green-faced female warrior just kicks the shit out of everything. Okay. And, uh, yeah, there's kids here, sorry. Scenes, how hard was it to work with the various pieces of costuming that <laughs> um, armor and animal pieces? <laughs> You've seen The Incredibles? <laughs> no capes. No capes. No capes. No capes. No capes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a big fight, they go, oh, I'm going to give this line and drop my cape. <laughs> it is a pain in the ass. <laughs> it on is the knight, and that's because he just physically can't take it off. <laughs> 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 can't lift his arm. Like, like but at, we do... At the 8 o'clock show, Toto lost his ear in the fight. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's it's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At least we're consistent. But he, <laughs> he did sell so losing the Yeah, yeah, yeah he, 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 he totally yeah. sold yeah. it. He was like, yeah. my oh, God. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> not, that's not canon, though. Oh. So. Uh, <laughs> we had two more times. We had to have turkeys. 
like I'm slice it off. <laughs> you notice a lot of the time we actually do incorporate the costumes into it. I mean, anytime I've got somebody with armor, usually I will have them specifically getting hit in that armor just because it, it makes a really nice noise and it's easy for them to absorb the blow and we can cover that, that sight line. So uh, oftentimes it's, it's an asset, um, but sometimes it's a pain in the ass. And if it's a pain in the ass, we remove it if we can. And if we can't, then we just deal with it. Yeah, for the first half of the series, uh, Bill's signature fighting move is shoot and then run away. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I actually kind of liked having the long coat because then I could be like, dramatic swish, and then I'd, I'd retreat that way. <laughs> 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 It came in handy. <laughs> yeah, see, I've actually been really lucky because during rehearsals, there has been there have been more than seven instances where my buckle would just pop open <laughs> and my sheet would just be like hanging out. Just, like, <laughs> free. like yesterday during rehearsal, when Sarah knocked me down, it just popped open. I was like, screw that sheet. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> I've always been so afraid that my garters are just gonna like snap. And <laughs> it's, it's a constant fear when I get on stage. I'm like, <laughs> I feel the same way with my zippers. Again. <laughs> 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 Audience and just gives us a big. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Yeah, like, the yeah, it worked so well woo! together, and that was a great example of that. Yeah. 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 Woo! That was like, my own mess. Was it silly? Yeah. <laughs> episode one. That was episode like, one. Was that first, yeah. first, oh, yeah. first yeah. week? Yeah. Get on the stage, oh. and I was like, I have to fight there. Oh, right for the I think sleeves. Snark. Uh, a few episodes ago, there was a fight with TikTok. They had a really stylized kind of freeze frame. Um, how did you come up with that? Were you, did you draw inspiration from anything? It was really nice. We had a lot of choreography that fight, and it was a shortcut. Yeah, most most of it is, is laziness. We studied a whole martial arts the graphic. Lisa Truffaut did it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, when I was when I was writing the script, it was just like, um, let's try something different, just visually. I thought it'd be interesting, and also uh, since I was in that fight, I was like, I don't want to fight a lot. <laughs> uh, and then it it, uh, it was the best of both worlds. <laughs> it, it, it was a shortcut that sh that served a purpose. Yeah, well done. It looked good. This is a question for Scott. When you started writing Queen's Castle, did you know you wanted to make a second series, or did it maybe sometime between writing episodes four and setting you decide, hey, I want to keep doing this? No, uh, I initially pitched it as a series. Uh, we recently wrapped up the, uh, the Adventures of Captain Cortez and the Trilander Brigade. And so th and that, that, that was a series that, that, was a series that I, I wrote and directed for four years, and that was one of our, our late night staples. And that's what's really cool about the overtime is that when most theaters are shutting down for the night, we're just now swinging into our second block of programming, essentially. And so um, just from an overtime standpoint, we now have a time slot that isn't going to be filled and that kind of has a following. And for people in San Antonio that want to come out and do stuff late night, um, yeah. so the idea was to do the eight weeks format again and see how that goes. Um, and then we're going to take a three-month hiatus, and then season two of Queen's Castle will pick up in January in the monthly format that Captain Cortez filled, where at the last weekend of each month, you can come see the next episode of Queen's Castle. And it'll run for six months, and, uh, and then we'll take another three-month hi hiatus, and then uh, season three, that's as far as I've got it planned out, so season three. Uh, and then I guess it's kind of up to y'all whether it goes from there, because as long as it keeps... Uh, selling well and is popular. So. Um, when you were writing this season of Queen's Castle, I know you went into the books and went pretty deep. I mean, there's some some characters that, you, unless you've actually read all the books, you wouldn't really recognize. Without giving anything away about next season, were there any characters you really wanted to somehow get into this season that you just couldn't? Um. No, everything, I'm happy with everybody that's in here. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was really awesome going back and reading the original books. Um, if, if you haven't, in a while, go back and reread them. There, there was a lot of stuff for a, a wannabe writer like myself to, to mine from. Uh, just little stuff like the silver slippers instead of the ruby slippers, you know, where the silver slippers became the ruby slippers because Technicolor had just been invented mm -hmm. yeah. and they wanted something more shinier for, for, for movies. And so I was like, oh, that's a cool little fun fact. But there was just so much to draw from in, in the books. And yeah, so season two and three, obviously we have a lot of characters that we haven't even touched upon yet. Like, I mean, Tweedledee and Tweedledum are iconic and we haven't even, we've only mentioned them in maybe two or three lines. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and that's the idea, is that we have a, we have a lot more interesting characters to, to, to draw from and hopefully keep the, sh the series fresh and interesting. Uh, but the original books were really awesome and fun to read. Uh, and Alice in Wonderland had a ton of stuff, Oz had a ton of stuff. So hopefully it worked out in a cool interpretation of it. Chris Kelly spent a few weeks campaigning for was it Lizard Bill? Bill the Lizard. Yes. I really want Bill the Lizard to show up. And there's... And, Trying to be a good literary nerd, yeah. There's there's tons of little Easter eggs and stuff in here, and unless you've read the books and are a good good literary nerd, you're not going to get it. Like the Red King mentions, like, oh, tonight we're going to be holding a caucus race, you know, and that's something that's only if you're well versed in the for at least. For everyone, uh, 
I remember the first time Fire came out, it was like on a very wobbly table. And I, was like, I, was, I was really scared as the audience member. And so how scared were y'all dealing okay, with a fire? Firefighter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I, I did, um, I'm not a good firefighter. <laughs> I would just like to say the first episode when like we saw and was clear flame was going to happen, I'm like, you realize how much hairspray <laughs> I'm wearing right now? I've got limited field of vision. I'm like, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to act her over to here. I don't think she would look at the flames. I think she'd move away from the I feel very strongly this character would be away from the flames. <laughs> I want to light as many as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Flash paper is your friend. They uh they handle it like champs, and I was very grateful that they were on board for that, especially with a, a, a low budget show like this. That you know we, we have to be able to at least give the concept of magic and you know the last episode we, we hooked up the fog machine to yeah. the cauldron. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, tell that story. Uh, as you walk out, it's right there to your left. We called it Macaulay Cauldron. Forrest is a meme. Macaulay Skullkin. Macaulay Skullkin. <laughs> and so the issue was that I, we, we have a little bit of a knowledge of fog machines, but I couldn't find anywhere if that. And so the idea was that inside of the cauldron is a small lip where the candles go, where they can use the flash paper and then the fog will come out later. I could find nothing if that fog was flammable or not. I just know it superheats the liquid and then vaporizes it. I couldn't find what the fog was made out of. So this is the part where Chris Kelly, and, Chris Kelly and I tested it. I'm like, all right, Chris Kelly, stand by with the extinguisher. Let's, let's see if the fog's flammable or not. So we, just, we just held candles in front of the fog, then we just activated it like... Good news, everyone! <laughs> yes? Okay, so this is really a question, it's just kind of, I have to bring it up. Okay. Because I know they'll have to talk about it. Okay. But I like, I think it was really smooth how you pulled Kyla's wig back on. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. yeah. Scott, and ultimately, without you guys, we're just 20 children playing around in a room. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. As a whole production of perspective, what was the most unexpected obstacle that came and how did you resolve it? Can I feel that one? <laughs> continual fight bruises? <laughs> Consistent I'm continual sorry, fight bruises. I had to conceal your body. It's not an episode of Muscle Days. Beat us down. On to the floor. She on has to, to get on the floor at least once in a <laughs> <laughs> I think there's, there's always, like, just, I mean, you're putting uh, scheduling. You're putting 16 people in a room and saying, let's all get on the same page. Um, and some people aren't going to be able to do that. We had to have some cast changes. I mean, uh, we had to write out certain characters, you know, for different things. So it's always a challenge, like anything, just trying to get all the group people on the same page. And so what I've learned from doing Cortez and Port Cove and all those things is that if you can manipulate those challenges appropriately, they become really, really great things. For example, the original uh, actress that we had lined up for the Duchess couldn't do the show. So then I'm looking at Chris Kelly, I'm like, <laughs>
Be a popular opinion amongst us, but I mean, like, it's a tie for me between Bale because that one was really heart wrenching. But I really like the Red Queen's death yeah. this week. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Was, uh, I, I have to admit, when I saw the wig come off, that was the that was the button on the scene. Uh, and I think that's what's really great about all of our villains and or heroes, and we did this with, with Cortez as well. Is that I think. I, with both of our villainesses, you could see their point. That's what makes it interesting. Yeah. Is that if someone came and killed your sister and stole her stuff, you'd probably be upset too. <laughs> uh, and if you know, if, you know and, and what wouldn't you do to get a loved one back? And so our 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 villains aren't wrong, and that you know we've all you know we all have the capacity to do bad things in order to protect things we love. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, should we be expecting a trailer for season two in December? Oh. Yeah. <laughs>
should be, or else it would be different. No, I mean, <laughs> all of you are talented people, and that's pretty obvious. But did you have any of your characters change based on the influence of the actor doing the role? Absolutely. Um, because a lot, uh, I guess maybe 60, 70 percent of these people worked on that prior series called Fort Cove with me. So, and that was one of the things going into the audition process is I know what these people are capable of. You know, when Chris Lombardo comes into the room to audition for me, says I'm part of the show, I mean, well, there's my scarecrow because I know Lombardo's awesome and he's tall and lanky. <laughs> <laughs> and so then when I'm writing those characters, I have that person's voice in my head or you know, I, I know that Siobhan can do a killer Wicked Witch scream, so <laughs> let's write that iconic moment in there. And so, yes, they, the actors influence the, the characters uh, a lot because now I have my friends' voices in my head when I write for them, and it helps a lot with, with what they do. Does that answer your question? I don't, I don't think you really liked the Red King when I, I brought it to you. <laughs> 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 you we dialed in the accents, yeah, and so there's uh, there's a lot that gets. I, I, we try to have an open creative process where here's my loose idea, share some of your ideas with me, and then we'll dial it in and we'll come up with a final project. Uh, or else it's no fun for anybody, you know. Uh, and so Lombardo first with the Red King, he came in with like this completely over the top Marlon Brando accent. <laughs> I was like, that's stupid. <laughs> I was like, just, sh just, let, just, like, just let me work on it. Just let me work on it. And then it turned out amazing. Um, oh, it's so creepy. Yeah. 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 And that's, and that's what's... Yeah. And it, yeah. and it, Once it, we twisted it from silly to creepy, then that's what yeah. 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 Well, and well, I mean... I'm not a good director. I just cast smart people. <coughs> and then they're going to do all the work. What's, um, what's your new actor? Just go ahead and just act actor. 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 <laughs> 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 and uh, I think that, I mean, isn't that one of the secrets of life? Just surround yourself with good people? Yeah. Actually, to touch on what Rose asked earlier about what our favorite parts were backstage or during the rehearsal process, the Red King was hysterical <laughs> because the only thing we could do to prevent ourselves from being 1,000% creeped out was joke about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I also have this, this, this really bad habit as an actor. Um, I like to, to uh, rehearse, and then when we go into the performance, I, uh, I'll add a detail or something um, because I like, I like trying to enhance my character and catch the other actors off guard. Um, things like, like touching Lily's face on stage without telling her. Um, so, so I, I, I mean, again, it's a bad habit as an actor. You shouldn't really do that. You shouldn't be, be trying to do it. But it's a very organic part, and, um, and it, it's probably my favorite part of, of acting in general and this show and this cast is that, that uh, with all of those things, everybody kind of rolls with the punches all together. Uh, a lot of things sort of... Uh, just come through because we uh, we don't really need to communicate about it. And the more that, that it goes along, the more in sync we are. Um, like you said, we, we, we each have, we, we've got five days with the script, and um, it's really only through uh, the strength and talent of all the people surrounding us that we're able to actually do it. So, uh, I don't know, great people that we work with. That's all. <laughs> Loaded question for you about the writing process. So, first of all, <laughs> when did you conceive the show, and did you start writing it very shortly after that? And how long does it take you to write an episode? And <laughs> <laughs> I want to know it all. <laughs> Three questions. No, we're just one answer, so it's okay. What was the most? So what was the, the when first, first one? When did you start writing it? How long um, did it take you? It started with a Batman Superman comic book. <laughs> <laughs> Batman and Superman are fighting Hawkman and Shazam. And uh, Batman and Superman, in case you don't know, are an amazing duo. Uh, <laughs> despite all their differences, they work well. <laughs> you said one's the Boy Scout and one's the villain. Um, and they, they castled villains. And I remember reading that, I was like, that's not really how castling works, because I love chess. And Castling is a very specific move that only the rook, only the only the only only the only the rook and the king can do it. 
But in this moment, in a Batman Superman comic book, they used it in a much larger term. Let's just switch pieces. And I was like, well, what? if they can do it, why can't we? Um, and I really liked uh, Strangers on a Train. And uh, <laughs> because I'm a, a noir and a old movie fan. And so I just really just a hodgepodge of that, of where, well, that's an interesting idea of just swapping pieces. And I've always enjoyed Alice in Wonderland Wizard of Oz, so there's an idea there. You just kind of think on it for a year or two, and then um, we were just submerged in Captain Cortez for, for four years, and then Porco was another crap that I write. Um, and then the idea was finally there, and I was like, okay, I think I have this solid idea of you know, the Red Queen and the Wicked Witch get together, and I really wanted to write a show with four female leads, and that's not something that I see a lot in the same mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, um, I'm like, we got a lot of cool chicks around here. <laughs> and so, came up with the idea, and uh, pitched it last year, and they said, okay, go for it. How long does it take? <laughs> Sunday night. Sunday night, you're right. Next week, you're killing me right now. I was asking you about 911. I write a script in about five days. Um, so. We opened this up Friday. They read it last last Saturday. Mm -hmm. Last Saturday, and I finished it that Saturday. Oof. Um, yeah. <laughs> Why are you making the noises? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it. Just don't. Um, uh, stubbornness. That's what built this country. Um, it, will, it, it, it comes down to responsibilities. I've told these people I'm going to produce something, and. Uh, all the poor man has his word, and I told him I'd do it, so shit, there's 12 people dependent, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so there, there's, there's, 15, there's 15 people dependent upon me, and uh, I need to just drop all my crap and get it done. Uh, and so it just seems to, so far it keeps working out, it seems to be. Uh, so, yeah, usually they'll get the script on Friday, and I'll immediately, the next, the next day, I'll start in, on writing the very next episode and then try to crank out the details and then have it done five, five days later. And so it's not that bad, it's only like 20 pages. Everybody can write a page a day. And if you're, if you're motivated, you write four or five pages a day. And then before you know it, you have a script. And that's the thing that, that frustrates me a lot is that I have a lot of talented friends and people that are the greatest writers that will never be because they say I have this really great idea but they never put anything on paper because they're still working out the minutia or whatever type of BS they want to tell themselves to keep themselves from creating something and that's all just BS because you just need to jump in and get the process started and uh, it's an old quote that you can't edit a blank page so even if you don't think it's the best idea in the world at least put something on that paper you know draw something on that canvas or whatever, just get it going and then before you know it, you'll be done. This question is for Sophie. From a uh, character standpoint, taking the stance that there are no good guys or bad guys, just people in different situations, you as uh, Dorothy have two up on the Wicked Witch, you know, and she hasn't really gotten direct revenge on you yet, it's kind of the war path of everything around you. As a character, do you feel like your comeuppance is nine? I'm not sure. Honestly, like with now. well, with <laughs> losing the witch and with her losing her memories and losing her personality, her her reason for revenge, it makes me wonder if anyone else in the two worlds holds on to those grudges, and if so, if that would be followed through, because it, I mean, other than her minions and her followers, there aren't a whole lot of supporters of the the witch either of them. So, it makes me wonder if that may or may not happen. Gasoline. Memory can always come back. Too. There you go. Not that good. We got a MacGuffin <laughs> to take it away. There's a MacGuffin to put it back. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's, 
mean, I mean, obviously it's one of those classic things where, you know, if, if you if you look at the story, Dorothy didn't do anything wrong. She didn't fly the house onto the sister. Um, but, you know, bad, bad things happen. And uh, Dorothy's getting the blame for it. So I, I think, uh, I, I feel like there's still a lot of world to explore where there's people that could still uh, be after Dorothy. Um, if anything, because she's a, she's a good guy. People think they can. Uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Anything else for tonight? Yes. I just want to say big ups to Gina for. Yeah. Any more questions? Any more questions, ladies Yes. Not really a question, more of a comment. Yes. Um, Scott mentioned that you wanted to try this serial play idea here in San Antonio. Matthew and I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area for 13 years, kind of known for its live theater. <laughs> <laughs> so for the camera, I that had, was. I had never seen anything like this in that area, it anywhere was, in that area. Yeah. And was, I have never seen a more dedicated and talented cast than I've seen right here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I give props to Amy and Matt for feeding the actors. Yes! <laughs> Crispy right, right as far as egg, egg crack. They're like, oh, you think they have no food at home? <laughs> Not like that. They get so excited. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.